Welcome guys to another review video. This one on the Vivor 8 kilowatt diesel heater. Uh, you guys may have already seen these before. I know I've seen a lot of videos popping up on them, but uh, they went ahead and sent me one, so I'm gonna give it a go, see what it's about. Let you guys know if it's any good. Pull it all out of the box. Came packaged pretty well. And this is just kind of the vent tube is sitting under there, so that got slightly crushed. And I guess I should have cleared this table off. But they got foam around the whole unit, and there is a first look at it. Oh, yeah, it's got a little remote. Clear some of this out of the way. You got the starter out of Plymouth right now. The Bendix has got stuck out and it's acting up. Check out that old uh, Chrysler placard, though. Kind of cool. Auto lights. Here's a glance at everything in the box. You got the owner's manual, which is actually pretty hefty. Should probably go read through it first, but we'll just plug and play. Hopefully it goes smooth. I'll put images of this at the end if you guys want to pause and read that, though. Uh, this is the exhaust pipe, a flexible intake in case you want to extend the heat coming out. I assume you could probably just put this right on there. Nope. You're going to have to put this into here. And this just snaps in. And then... This will go on to there. Uh, you get some clamps, wire. So this, this gets powered by a 12-volt battery and then diesel fuel. Uh, and then a muffler. Looks like it could be stainless steel, but not a super high-grade one. Let's see. Uh, 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 works pretty good. A muffler. And taking a glance at the overall construction on this, looks like an aluminum heat exchanger, cast aluminum. This electronic display is just kind of taped on here, actually. You got that remote. This is the diesel tank. Let's look at that. And, uh, and this is where the battery gets hooked up on the back. You have an inlet fan. There you go. Car parking heater. Diesel. Model WF5001. 12 volts at 40 watts. 8 kilowatt uh, heat output. So for hooking the exhaust up, you can just flex this out however you like. Both sides are the same. And this is a good grade of stainless steel. You got these two ports down here. And I assume this is the exhaust side because it's the only side this one fits on. And the other must be the inlet. Look at that. Slips right on. You got some hose clamps and brackets. Uh, depending on how you want to arrange that. And for this intake, it seems like maybe we're missing the hose. That hose is actually in here. For the battery, I have got this bad boy by Power Eurus LifePo 4 or lithium iron phosphate. This is a 100 amp hour battery and it's fully juiced, fresh off the charger. Now, before I fill this with fuel, I, I'm a little curious what happens if we power it up with no fuel. So let's have some plastic on it. Right, so let's see what happens if we hit the power button. Nothing. Hit it again. Well, hold it again. Okay, and it's showing H3. The fan did kick on though. You can see that lit up when the fan came on. I don't know exactly what all these mean, but the manual will show that. I think that H3 is actually the heat setting, but look, if you go down to the left, it actually goes up. And uh, six is the highest. And that noise you hear right now, I think is it trying to pump diesel to start a flame. Fan speed's changing a little bit, but of course it has no fuel, so I'm curious to see how long it will go trying that. On this remote, you just have off, on, minus, plus. Let's see if it's calibrated to that already. There goes up. Oh, yeah, heat two, heat three. Okay. Yeah, so this thing's still trying to go. Uh, a couple minutes later, and it just shot itself down. It's showing an E10 code. Here's a chart of all those codes, and E10 is failure in ignition. I think it's time to dump some fuel in it. I'm going to fill it up with exactly one gallon of diesel, which coincidentally is exactly how much it takes. You also have a little uh, sight glass on the side of it. Now let's try turning this on. Get more crazy. Turn it all the way to heat six. And uh, keep in mind, this should be vented outside, guys. I'm just doing some testing in here, but... So actually, if you were in a warehouse, you would probably want to just vent this inside like those big floor turbo heaters, you know, because as long as you have doors and windows open, it's fine. You're actually wasting heat by venting that outside. You see it burning off those residual oils on the stainless, and it's starting to get a little toasty out of here. Not as toasty as that exhaust, though. This intake. Yeah, make sure that don't get clogged up. See how much this muffler quiets it down? If I get it on there. Come on, baby. There we go. 
good amount. Nothing crazy. Yeah, I've got the timer going. I'm going to see how long that one gallon lasts or if the battery goes dead. Uh, but I'm not going to lie. So far, I'm really impressed. I mean, this is nice, cozy, clean heat coming off of here. It doesn't smell like anything. And actually, the exhaust, you know, smells perfectly clean. You can't smell a hint of anything. I, and this is still producing carbon monoxide, so don't go running this indoors in a camper or something. You'll, you'll kill, your, kill yourself. I mean, it's not stinky whatsoever. And this is a great little hand warmer if you're wrenching outside or something. You got this pointing out front of the garage, and this is heating the garage. So I'm actually going to let this go to town in here with the, no ventilation. And I do have a carbon monoxide detector in here. I guess I'd call this like a two-car garage. It's not really insulated at all and super drafty. This fiberglass door is drafty as heck. And I, I usually heat this with the waste oil furnace. Clean Burn CB2000. It's a 200,000 BTU. Thing works awesome, but it's actually down right now, and I haven't gotten around to repairing it. So I've been running this little. Uh, I think it's made by Doctor Heater. This is an 8,000 watt electric heater, just to kind of keep it above uh, freezing in here. Uh, at night and that is just that runs the electric bill up like crazy it's currently 45 degrees in the garage and 38 degrees outside and i trust that thing running in here so i'm gonna go ahead and shut this door and we'll check back in a little bit an hour and a half later let's see what we got warm in here it's not smoky at all and the temperatures come up to 51 degrees it's currently 36 outside but it is windy i just looked up the feel like and it's 29 degrees over here this little heater is firing away that clicking noise kind of varies Sometimes it gets a little bit louder and then not so much. And the battery is at 13.2 volts. So I was just running a few calculations and this should actually, uh, at 40 watts, this should last around 30 hours. So I think we'll definitely run out of fuel before then. Uh, you see the fuel level on the side has dropped that much. So not very much and it's, it brought the temperature up in here. I thought this might have been the voltage before in the beginning. It's actually, it's a temperature. It's, 14 degrees Celsius, which is indicating about 57 degrees. And that makes sense because that uh, temperature over the door is you know, much, much further away. And there's a big draft here too. I mean, the door doesn't seal up against there good. So that's not really that accurate. I'd say centrally in the garage, yeah, about 55 degrees, pretty comfortable. We're now around the four hour mark, 54 degrees on a thermostat over there and 15 degrees here. So about 59 degrees in the whole garage. Uh, feeling good. I'm gonna let this go throughout the night. I do have the smoke detector in here and uh, you know, the carbon monoxide detector hasn't gone off yet. So I'm feeling pretty confident in it. You know, I, I trust it at this point. And that's what the fuel level's looking like. So, uh, yeah, check back in the morning. Keep in mind, we got this on the max heat six. Let's see what happens if we turn this down. The injector slowed down a bunch. So you'd probably burn way, way less keeping this on heat one. Still not sure why the screen is backwards though. I mean, this side's going up. I'd so the unit has shut down that's 46 degrees in here 31 outside and we have an e08 code is it still warm no this shut down a long time ago oh, yeah she ran out of fuel a little bit still in there battery's got plenty of voltage 13.28 i just filled it up with another gallon of diesel and i'm going to try to see if we can start this up well, fired back up fine and I looked up that code e08 is the flame is extinguished so we can assume it just ran is that low fuel level I did look back on the garage cameras for when this shut off and we had a solid 10 hours of running on high uh, so I'm gonna turn this down to low and make sure I'm probably not gonna run a full test but I would imagine you get quite a bit more than that but I just want to let it go for an hour or so and make sure that it stays on on low and, and see what the output is and we'll see if it can raise the temperature in here at all too one hour later and she's still cooking along there slow and steady definitely not going to heat this whole garage at that rate it's only brought it up one degree since starting it let's pop the cover off so we can take a look at the inside and how things work you get your fuel tank sitting right here not bolted down or anything uh, that pickup is off at about an inch so that makes sense why it shut off you know this morning uh, but it's kind of good so that way if you get any water in there it's not going to be trying to pick the water up and you got the plastic line running into the fuel pump is all that clicking is it's got a nice locking connector on it it's like a vw style with the stainless clip and then you have the nylon hose running around the belt and going into the bottom of the heater unit you see this is the inlet and then on the other side is the stainless exhaust and then you also have a fuse block on the positive lead. Now, so everything's looking pretty good in here. I, I would think one upgrade that you could possibly do in the future if you wanted to put this in like an RV or a permanent living space would be maybe replace all these 
uh, nylon lines with like a hard copper line, something that's not ever gonna dry rot and go through. Because you know, if, if this blows off right here, or breaks, it's gonna it's gonna cause a mess and potentially a fire. As far as what's going on in the burn box, I really I, I don't know, so couldn't tell you. But I can tell you it does work nice. Let me crank this up to high now, since I plan on coming in here to do a little bit of work. Uh, so again, I can't say it enough, do not run this unit in like a small little RV. If you're in an uninsulated, drafty place, clearly it hasn't set off the carbon monoxide detector. It's really no different than running one of those old style kerosene heaters. I mean, this, this is actually better in my opinion because I can't smell it at all. The old kerosene heaters, you could smell. This thing doesn't put off a scent of anything, which I suppose could make it even more dangerous actually. At this point, I'm ready for some final thoughts. Uh, I'm not going to go into any of the other features it has on this display. We'll show the manual, like I said at the end, but it shows you can do time startup, time shutdown, and maybe a couple other things. Uh, and by the way, this garage might look hazy a little bit in some of these images on the camera just, just because of the way uh, these, the lighting is in here, but it's not at all. Now, could you find a better quality unit like this? Yeah, probably. But for the price point they sell these, I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. And I honestly am blown away with how clean it runs. I can't say that enough. I mean, there is just not a scent of anything in here. Uh, I think... As I already said, the major flaw would be these plastic hoses, and it's funny, I just typed in many diesel heater failures. All the issues I found were in regards to the hoses, either uh, the, the rubber gets dry and then cracks over time and leaks out, or this, this uh, one guy had the, the nylon tubing get pushed up against the exhaust and melt through, and it was a big smoky mess. So I think if you plan on using this permanently, replacing that with copper tubing would be a good call. This is some kind of like thermoplastic, I guess. I mean, it's, it doesn't... It's not doesn't bend at all feels very well made you know it's it's hot over here but i can hold my hand on it cold on the other side i think it's a sweet little backup heater and i will strongly consider putting one of these in probably the clapper camper since we don't have any heat in that at all right now it's very efficient quiet and you know, seems to work good and when it comes to doing a permanent install you can see how easy it would be to just ditch this tank and take the hose inlet hose and tap it into your your 200 gallon diesel fuel tank you'll be good on heat for the entire winter uh just make sure that again you, you keep an eye on it because if one of these plastic lines breaks and you're away from your truck for a week and you left the heater going or something and you know alaska well you're going to come back to uh not not a good time diesel all over the ground so that'll wrap up my initial review on the vivor 8 kilowatt electric diesel heater i think it converts over to around like 27,000 btu heat output thereabout you can see it's a little small for a garage this size but it does keep it around 55 in here when it's 30 and windy outside i'll drop a link to them down below in the description so feel free to check them out and it can say it does work but just be careful you don't get carbon monoxide poisoning or burn your house or be down or anything like that Keep an eye on it, be careful. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon. No nonsense, no how, over out. And like usual, at the end of the video, I'm gonna flip through this owner's manual. I know it's not the most ideal thing, but you guys can just hit pause if you wanna read that. and give you ample time to hit pause. Some of these images are already kind of blurry anyway, like that one. Actually, it looks better on the camera than it is in person, oddly enough. And, it, you know, if this isn't legible, then I apologize. It's a long one, too. 30 pages long. Halfway through. Get some reflections. That's all your fault codes. Jen's out there doing some editing. I don't know if you guys hear. She's figuring it out though.
It's not super ideal. It's good for like short ones, but you know, long stuff, not really. Lots of info in here. And that's it. Alrighty. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.